Okay. Thanks, Lizzie. Okay. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. Um, thanks very much to Lizzie for inviting me along again. Um, it's nice to be able to do these things. We tend to do one or one a year or so. Um, I'm from a company called Vision Aid Technologies, and my name is Ellis Ellis. Um, I haven't developed a stutter. My first name and surname are exactly the same. Um, and I'm the managing director, as you said, of, of Vision Aid Technologies. We're a family owned and run business um, started by my late father back in 1996. And we are really passionate about finding the best possible technology based solution or even a, a straightforward, simple non technology based solution, actually, um, to assist anybody with a, a visual impairment or a vision loss. Um, that does extend into ergonomics and other parts as well, which I'll try and cover um, a little bit during the, the time we have. But it's, um, this will just be sort of a, a very brief overview of, of one product, perhaps from each of the main categories that we provide, um, as we've got hundreds of different solutions. So obviously, there's no way, unfortunately, I can cover all of those. Um, but it'll be quite fast paced going through the different types of solution. And I just really hope you'll find it useful and, and informative. Um, I think Lizzie's going to be manning the chat as well. So if there's any questions, please ask them there. And if we can't ask, uh, answer them straight away, um, then we'll get back to them afterwards uh, as well. Um, so yes, uh, you're probably familiar with um, quite a few visual impairments. Um, the number one cause is, is macular degeneration. And I'll sort of touch on the, the visual condition losses as I go through um, showing you some of the products. Um, and I hope it comes across okay on the webcam. Sort of, it's, it's always better in person, but um, it's not too bad, I don't think, with these. And hopefully you get an idea of how some of these systems can really help, um, what situations they're really good in, uh, and also when they don't, don't necessarily work. Um, but we've got a whole range of, of print-based um, catalogs and information leaflets and things as well. So from lighting, which I'll, I'll very briefly touch on at the beginning as well, to um, then optical magnifying aids, which is sort of the most common aid that everybody knows about. Um, and then there's a full range of electronic based specialist solutions as well. Um, so we'll go through each some of those. Um, one of the main things that we do, um, obviously a lot of the people we deal with are um, quite elderly um, due to the number one cause of vision loss being age related macular de degeneration. And it's a really big decision for somebody spending hundreds or, or even thousands of pounds on a solution that to see whether it will work for them. Um, because as I'm sure you know as well, it, everyone's eyes are different. So even if somebody's presenting with exactly the same condition, uh, even the same visual acuity, what they can actually see can vary quite dramatically. Um, so the easiest way to make sure you get it right is to actually put the solutions in front of the people and let them try them out themselves. Um, so that's what we try and do. And we do thousands of demonstrations in people's homes, at schools, at workplaces every year. Um, and that's really, really important, um, we find. Um, webinars and remote things work well for, for younger users with some remaining vision. Um, but obviously, once you get to severely sight impaired users, it's very difficult then to, to really for them to be able to see um, on, a, on a computer screen what, what they're going to be able to actually see in real life from it. Um, so I'm going to dive into the products. Um, I just switched my camera on here. Hopefully, you can then see my, my table down here. Um, so we'll start with magnifying aids that I'm sure you're all familiar with. So the standard optical magnifying glass. This is a German manufacturer product Eschenbach, which are, they're really good quality ones. You can get cheap ones on Amazon for kind of five or 10 pounds, but the, the key thing is the quality of the optics on them. Um, and then you get built in LED lighting as well, because contrast is, is really, really important. Um, so if I hold up um, a document here with lots of different print sizes, um, it's a little bit tricky for me to try and get this right on here, but if we hold the magnifier over it, hopefully you can see that it's enlarging it. Take it away again. And this is a three and a half times magnifier. So it's, they say it's three and a half, well, it's apparently supposed to be 3.5 times actual magnification, but trying to actually achieve it to get that much bigger is, is quite tricky. It's more, we sort of tend to find it's kind of two or two to two and a half um, on there. What you, hopefully you can also notice as well, with optical magnifying glasses, this is a three and a half times, you get distortion around the text. So as you read across things, the text will sort of bow and bend due to the, the, the magnifying power through the through the glass. Um, and the problem is, as a, visually, a user who's visually impaired, if their vision deteriorates, they need a higher power magnifier. But the lenses, as you go up the powers, just due to physics, um, unfortunately, become smaller and smaller. Also, what happens is um, what's called the depth of field. Um, so the distance that you can actually use this while it remains in focus becomes shallower and shallower. So you have to hold it closer to the page and you have to hold this closer to your eye. Um, so if I bring this up to the camera on here, I've then got a, a really 
you've basically almost got to sit it on top of the page on here. Um, the light's nice on this as well to, to enhance the contrast, but you can see probably hopefully around the edges of the text there that it's it's bowing and bending uh, and that just gets more and more pronounced. So it's they're, they're fantastic solutions and obviously they've been around for centuries, um, but they only go so far and the higher the magnification you go, the worse they become in terms of the distortions. Also, then they're not so good for you ergonomically because you're having to bend forward and hold the page up. Um, and if you've got a lot of reading to do, that then becomes quite tiresome and it becomes difficult to then enjoy reading, which is a big thing ab about the electronic solutions and how they help. So if we then look at an electronic version of this, so th these magnifiers, obviously the, the other advantage is they're relatively inexpensive. I said £10 for, for really cheap ones. The German branded Eschenbach ones are sort of ranged from £40 to £80 or so, depending on the power and the type of magnifier that there are. There are lots of optical magnifiers as well, which we, we've got in our website and on the catalogue as well. Um, but if you go to something like a handheld electronic magnifier, so this is one with a, a five and a half inch screen and all electronic magnifiers work on the same pre premise. They have a camera with lighting. So you do, they, they all have their own uh, LED lighting. Then you have a, a screen, which the camera is obviously connected to. And then there's processing from the device that goes on in between it. Um, this unit, you can fold the stand out on here, sit it on the page, and it will then magnify the text. And there's no distortion on the edges of the, of the text. Just move this over a little bit. From here. And the other major advantage on this magnifying glass is, as the same with any magnifying glass, the magnification power is fixed. So if you are wanting to read text at different sizes, you may then need to have different optical magnifiers for each text size that you want to read. Um, to maximize the amount of text you can see. Electronic devices, you can just adjust the magnification very simply with, the, with controls. They all have variable magnification. Um, so this one goes from two times um, up to about 20 times, I think it is on here. So very, very large. Obviously, if you're at this kind of size, um, these magnifiers might not actually be the right sort of product for you because it's very difficult to see. But then if we've got text, if you can see on here, I've got text here down at um, I think it's four point text. I can't actually read it from, from here, the very top line on here. And our, our laser printer struggles to print it at, at decent quality on there. So coming down here, you can see it magnifying, but hopefully it's sort of come, coming across on here as well. So that's the smallest text that you'd ever see printed on anything. I think we said it sort of appears on CD cases, it's that small. Um, and yet it's, it's, this isn't the, um, the camera itself having problems with it, it's just the text isn't isn't that clear uh, which is why the characters are running into each other as you then come down to the larger print um, it then becomes even clearer on there so major advantage on that a lot of people ask us well can i do this on a mobile phone uh we're just using the camera and you can to an extent but the problem with mobile phones is i'll grab mine actually i've got a samsung uh, galaxy phone on here um if you put it onto video mode Firstly, it's not designed to stand up, so you have to hold it. Um, secondly, then you get focusing issues because the cameras aren't designed to focus this close up. So then you have to hold it away from the page and then a tiny movement on your hand then translates into a big movement on the screen. Um, there's no color changing on this either, or you can get free apps that will do that for people. Um, but they're not, the quality just isn't as good as what you get on a dedicated device. But for some people, if that works, that we we always suggest try mainstream technology first because there's no point spending hundred of pounds on something if you've already got something in your pocket that that can do it for you. Um, so for younger users, a lot of users might use something like this. But even students going to university and students at school with DSA funding or um, funding through local councils, a device like this with dedicated purpose for it um, is so much easier to use, um, and the quality is very good as well. So this one has a touch screen as well, so you can just pan around digitally on the, the image as well without having to physically move the page. Um, and then it has a fold out handle as well. So for ease of sort of grasping and using just the zoom size, and then it will auto focus on text at any distance on there as well. So really nice. That particular product is called the Clover 6, but we've um, got a range of units from 149 pounds up to well over a thousand. This one's in the middle sort of price point, um, but it's one of our best selling ones. It's one of the latest ones that came out um, the end of last year and the, it's got sort of the latest sort of features hdmi output on it as well so you can connect it into a larger screen so instead of the five and a half inch screen you can plug that into a television screen um, and see the the same image but blown up onto a 40 or 50 inch television as well so that's that's nice for users if they need to do that as well so that's 
handheld magnifier, I'm actually going to very quickly jump back to I'll switch that one off. Lighting next. Um, I should have done that first, actually. Apologies for that. So we've got a whole range of lights. I'm just going to show this one. It's the smallest and easiest one to demonstrate. Again, if, he, if you've got a user or a patient that's just at the beginning stages of, of vision loss, uh, they may have a, just a cataract and need some assistance before it's operated on, or if it's the early stages of, of AMD or, or another um, eye condition, better lighting, or, or just old age, in fact. Um, better lighting makes a huge difference. So this is a product called the Travel Bright 3. It's a foldable light. Um, all the lights that we do have adjustable brightness, so we can adjust the brightness level on here. Um, and this one also has adjustable color temperature. I hope it sort of comes across on the webcam, but the, the webcam then tries to adjust itself. It's not doing too badly on there. So this one has three different color temperatures, which can be very important as well. If somebody's very sensitive to the amount of light and the, the brightness of the light and the, and the color of the light, then being able to adjust that's important. Uh, and also when it gets sort of later on in the evening, um, you may not want quite such a kind of harsh daylight kind of light. It might be nicer to make it a little bit warmer um, for users as well. So just to sort of taking it away and putting it on there. Um, this unit provides quite a large number of lumens for such a small portable light as well. Um, and it also doubles as a power bank. So if your user's got a mobile phone, you can charge it, use it to charge a smartphone. Any standard um, smartphone, Android or, or uh, Apple device will be charged from it as well. And it lasts eight hours on a single charge. Um, and we do, there's a whole range of, of these desk standing ones, floor standing ones, um, ones with a clamp on an arm so you can have it um, reaching up and over if you're doing crafts or something as well. Um, it's really, really useful. So, so lighting is, along with optical magnifiers, are always the first things that people go for um, if, they, if they need a bit of assistance. Um, this unit's £42, including VAT, because on lighting you can't VAT zero rate um, the costs. On other dedicated optical and electronic aids, you can. So visually impaired users, if they're buying it for their own personal use, do not have to pay VAT on it. So it's, it's nice they get a bit of a saving that way as well. I'll switch this one off. So then we'll go on to something a little bit larger, which is a transportable video magnifier. So I'll just move these out of the way. So I've got a, a unit here called a Clover Book. Uh, this is the, actually the Clover Book Pro. So the first thing about this one is it, it unfolds. So I'm gonna have to adjust my camera up a little bit now. Excuse me, I don't know how I do that. So the first thing you'll notice about this versus a handheld is obviously this, the screen size is much larger. This is a 12 and a half inch screen size. Um, this one's a nice one to show because it's, I can just easily set it up. We've got much larger desktop versions of this as well. But this works a bit differently in that you place the page underneath it and move the page around under the camera. There's a camera under here pointing down onto the screen, exactly the same idea as the desktop unit, as the handheld unit. Sorry, I'll just switch it on with the button on the side here. Just take a second to come on. There we are. And the other nice thing about these, are they are designed for people of all ages. So they are, the vast majority of the solutions we have are straightforward and easy to use. So we've got a picture of a magnifying glass with a big tactile control. As you rotate it, clockwise makes it larger, anti-clockwise makes it smaller. So very, very straightforward. Um, we have users, obviously age related as well, if they've got um, the early stages of dementia uh, or other kind of cognitive issues, then these being straightforward to use means that the majority of people with some training will still be able to operate them, which is can be really, really important. So if we zoom in on, on here, just to give you an idea, so that the range of magnification is enormous on these. And again, if you were needing this kind of level of magnification, we wouldn't straight away, we wouldn't be suggesting a solution like this because if the condition is deteriorative, they may only be getting six to 12 months of use out of it before they need to go on to a different solution. Um, so it may actually in fact be better for them to look at the a different solution based more on text to speech, which we'll come on to um, as early as possible, just so they get used to that. Um, so it's about managing people's expectations um, as well. Um, and we've always found it's better to be realistic with people. Um, on the, we, we never pro give sort of false promises to people um, and also try and prepare them for things in the future as well. Obviously, you, you don't want to depress people, but it's better that they hear what is going to be happening with their vision. Um, 
and they're prepared for it rather than it becoming a sort of a shock after shock after shock as, as things keep getting worse for them. Um, so yeah, not, <laughs> not that nice to think about, but it, it, is, it is always better in our experience from that. Um, color mode as well, I didn't actually go through those in the handheld, so I'll do those on here. So the other key advantage is you can change the colors of the text and the backgrounds on an electronic device to whatever preference you might have. To be honest, they're all weird and wonderful colors on all of these devices, but nine, over 99% of people prefer white on black, black on white, yellow on black, or black on yellow. Those four colors and the two colors and, and the two combinations of each, the vast majority of people prefer those. What we tend to find as well, if somebody has a visual condition where the distortions in their vision are dark in color, um, then picking a darker background then really helps because the, those darker distortions tend to get merged more into the background because there is more background color than, than foreground color. And the human brain is then really clever at filtering out those distortions far more so than when you've got a white background. Um, the only thing I can liken that to is, is floaters, which I have in my eyes. And if I look at a white background, a brilliant white one, that's when you're going to spot the floaters. Um, if you have a dark background, the floaters are still there, but they're being filtered out. And, and even when you read across text, because they're only small, you don't really notice them. So hopefully that sort of makes sense on there. Um, other features you get on, on devices like this quite often are line markers. So this is good for helping you track because at high magnifications, people don't necessarily just have to track across the line of text. Um, there's my finger, but you, sorry, across the line you do, across the current line that you're on. What you don't want to do is jump down as you're going because it can be hard to hard to spot. So the line markers help with that. Um, and then you can have those vertically if you're doing columns of figures, bank statements, and things, or if you if you need to need to read down markers as well. So you can adjust this so we, we find this is particularly useful actually if you use it with, with nystagmus so that's the condition where the eye moves uncontrollably um, sort of left and right and sometimes and up and down as well and there's, there's various degrees of of that um, if you've got multiple lines then your eyes will be moving all over the place all of the time across the whole screen trying to stay focused on the, the word that you're reading if you blank that off you then just got one line to focus on so it's much easier again to to keep position uh, and know where you are and not get lost and, and jump between lines. So that's, that's a really useful feature on, on some of these units. You can do vertical ones as well. All of these are adjustable size-wise as well, um, width and, and position, and then just back to there. Um, the nice thing with a, a user like this is you can also work underneath the camera as well. So people use these for, if I put it into color, um, you can use it for sorry, sort of sewing, uh, writing underneath as well, so I can hold a pen very easily and write underneath. So I have crosswords, Sudoku puzzles, um, writing Christmas cards, birthday cards, um, and then sewing um, or knitting or wiring a plug or painting. So they're not just used for reading. Um, people use them for their nails. Um, I won't show you my, my nails under there. Um, but it's anything you can think that you can put under there that you, you need assistance with magnification wise, you can do um, as long as you've got the distance. Um, this screen is height adjustable as well. It tilts the angle as you as you adjust it, but the um, you don't get sort of the Star Wars text um, issues which you get on some units because this one actually um, has a technically it's, it's an accelerometer and it's, it measures the angle the screen is at and then it straightens the the text accordingly. So it's quite clever the technology that's involved in it. Um, this one. Um, there are three different versions actually. So there's the Cloverbook Lite, which is just this basic unit here. Um, then if you pay a little bit more you get a little periscope sort of camera that comes up here which is a distance camera and uh, this is this model here with the distance camera is then called the cloverbook plus and i can then switch to this distance camera with a button on the side on here and then oh got to do the other way it's got a little collar on there go past me on there and i've got a an eye chart over on there's my other webcam i'll just hopefully go over the top of that then I can zoom in. Sorry, it's inverted on here because it's it's because I'm pointing it towards myself. It's automatically mirrored the view, um, so you can use it like a magnifying mirror. That's the main thing. But I'm not going to um, scare you all and, and zoom in a long way into my face and, and hair on there. So I just thought I'd do a, a back to front eye chart on here with it mirrored. Obviously, normally this would be in the distance, and it's the correct way round. But you can see here's the standard eye chart on here with the letters. So it's it's really powerful. So people at home would use this for magnifying it on the television, looking in their garden, using it as a magnifying mirror. 
people in work would use it for um, as when they attend meetings, you can point at the projector screen, see what's going on in the meeting. If they need to see if somebody's in, in the office, you can point it around the office and see who sat at their chairs. Um, and then in school, obviously, you'd use it for seeing the, the projector screen or the, the interactive whiteboard uh, on there as well. Really, really useful. And it just adds a whole different kind of set of things that a device like this can be useful for having that distance capability. It's also quite dis discreet. We do have some units which have really huge sort of chunky cameras on them as well. So this is, they try to make this as, as inconspicuous as possible. Um, some people really don't like sort of standing out um, with a visual condition. Uh, and if you've got a big sort of technology device plonked on your desk. Some of the, de the desktop units we have are absolutely enormous. Um, so people in, in workplaces may not want one, even if it's though, even if it's the better product for them, they might be worried about it just because of it, sort of the stigma attached to it and, and being different and standing out. So that's something else to take into consideration when you're assessing a patient. Um, it, it's their, their own kind of personal feelings towards technology as well and whether they'd actually use it. Um, what we don't want is people getting these things and them going in a cupboard or being put away and not used. <laughs> that's completely defeats the point. Um, so, yeah, so that's a um, quick overview of the, I'm just sort of wary on time because there's quite a bit to get through on there. Um, so that's the unit on here. The nice thing, and we just fold it down. It weighs 2.4 kilos, comes with a carry case as well. It lasts for five hours on battery. Um, it's actually, very quickly, it's got a user replaceable battery as well. So whether you remember kind of 10 years ago or more, you used to be able to get laptops. All laptops had a push button to release a big battery that just then take out before they got sort of ultra slim and the batteries were integrated. Um, this one is the only product like this with a, that's a transportable that you can actually replace the battery. So if it wears out, or indeed if you need to use it for more than five hours a day, which in a workplace setting or a, a university setting you might need to do, then you can buy a separate battery and charger for it as well. So it's, it's really nicely thought through. Um, on there so that's the cloverbook product um so this one cost wise the cloverbook um light the basic version which is just the magnification at close up just under 1500 pounds 1495 then with the um distance camera it goes up to 1795 I believe and then there's also a pro version which has text to speech on top of it so it will read out loud to you i'm going to show you some text to speech on a different device uh, in a minute actually um, that one will then read a full A4 page out loud to you as well as magnifying it. So then if your eyes become tired, you can you can use the text to speech. That one's just over two thousand pounds. So, so it does go up a little bit, but they're not cheap. These devices. Um, the good news is that for education and business users, they are all funded um, for home users. Unfortunately, um, there are very few health insurance policies in the UK that cover vision loss. Uh, in other countries like Germany, it's, it's completely covered under your health insurance. Um, but here, there's, there's nothing for that, even on private ones. Uh, I mean, but um, so it's, it's a shame. Once you've retired and paid all your taxes, you don't really get much assistance at all from, um, from the government for that, unless you live in Wales, in which case you get handheld electronic magnifier, a bit like this, free of charge on the Welsh NHS. NHS through their the Welsh Low Vision scheme. We actually provide a different optical, uh, different handheld magnifier to that scheme. Um, for that, it's still a very good unit, not quite as technologically advanced as that one, but it's it's free on the NHS. So in Wales, um, sadly we don't get anything like that in the UK and, and Scotland don't at the moment either. Um, okay, so that's the global unit. Pop that down out the way. Try to just break the table. <laughs> I'm just going to switch cameras back on there. So. What um, I'm going to show next is wearable technology. So this has only really come out, come about really the last, well, three or four years or so. There was a, a product actually about seven or eight years ago, um, which is now in its fourth generation. Um, but it was the mainstream kind of advent of uh, virtual reality technology that came through mobile phones in kind of 2016, 2017, that then led in kind of 2017, 2018 to wearable video magnifiers based on that same kind of technology. So I've got a unit here uh, called the Acesight VR from a company called Zoomax. And I've taken, they use smartphone technology. So I've actually taken the phone out of it. It's a, a Xiaomi mobile phone they use, Chinese um, manufacturer phone, which is now the second or third biggest mobile phone manufacturer in the world um, after Samsung. Um, so this slots into the front of here and obviously it's the same premise as the handheld effect you've got cameras on here you've got a screen on there and then you've got the head headset here which have close-up lenses through there which will then allow you to even though your eyes are only sort of a, a few centimeters from the screen 
your eyes can comfortably focus on the screen uh, in front of you um, without any strain. So I can't really demonstrate it through a webcam on here. It's really, really difficult. What I hope I can do, I'm just going to plug it into my computer and then share the screen. And I hope it will allow you to see it. It just takes me a second to um, start something up on here. Lizzie, I'm just trying to see. I'm not sure if you've. Ah, sorry, no, I found it. <laughs> I'm not used to using uh, Blackboard. Apologies. I just found the share screen. We did practice this on Monday, but it was a while ago. Uh, share application screen. So I'm hoping, um, Lizzie, if you could tell me, can you see two images on that? Yes, I can. I can see two images. Fantastic. So this is the left and the right eye of the handheld, effectively. Um, what I'm going to do to make it a little bit larger, um, you can't sort of just focus it on one, but I can use built in accessibility tools in Windows, Windows Magnifier, which I'll talk about in a minute, actually, to actually zoom in on here. And hopefully this then gets larger on there. And I'll put it on that eye over there on the right one to give you an idea. Right. There is my desk with a cup of tea. Just push the button on here. This is a remote control, a Bluetooth based one. Um, very, very simple to use. Joystick with up and down. So as you'd probably expect, as you zoom in with up, it will make the text larger. So I can zoom on the newspaper over here and then down on the joystick zooms out. So really simple. That's the main controls of it. Um, so to give you a bit of an idea, if I sort of come around here, I've got so it has to be a bit awkward with the USB extension cable here. Got the eye chart up over there, so we can zoom in on it on here. I think it's an indication of the magnification as well there. You can actually just about read some of the visual acuity scores on the left as well with that. If I come down the chart, if we zoom right up, you, you'll start to see now that the text is has pixelated. It's very difficult for me to kind of bend around and, and show this, I'm afraid, um, with keeping it steady. It's much easier when it's, when it's on your head. Um, but it's very, very powerful. So zoom all the way out. That's a, a long way away um, on the other side of the room on there. Um, so if you imagine somebody with macular degeneration who has a, a very small, um, well, the, their central vision is has gone, um, with a device like this, you can very easily then position the text into your peripheral um, and make it much larger. Uh, and the results are well, they're astonishing, really. Um, we get so many users that try this on and then can see people's faces, um, loved ones' faces, like friends, families, children again. And it's it's kind of quite overwhelming because they may not have seen somebody's face for kind of well, five five years. Some users are struggling along with with just magnifying glasses. Um, the biggest problem we have is letting people know that this kind of technology actually exists. Um, so that's where hopefully some of you might be able to help in the future as well. <laughs> so I'll just quickly go through the controls on here as well. So you've got the zoom on there. It's got the same kind of features as well. So you can adjust colors. So it's got all the same color modes as well. Strangely, this isn't actually as comfortable to sit and read with, though, um, because of the way it is. And you have to sort of concentrate and move your head around. People actually find, find uh, the, the solutions I've already shown, the, the transportable unit or a larger desktop unit, much, much more comfortable if you're an avid reader and want to sit down and read the daily newspaper. Um, but it still works well. Uh, and obviously, then there's things with this you can do that you can't do with a a desktop unit so you can take this to the theater or the cinema or to go and see a sporting event um, you can play a musical instrument with this because it's hands-free you're wearing it on your head um, you can do painting on on big easels with it uh, you can play bowls you can do play snooker you can do archery um, kind of any sport that's not contact based uh, contact based you, you can kind of do with it um, one thing you definitely can't do with it is drive, and we do get asked that almost all. Everybody asks, "Could I use it to drive with?" Um, unfortunately, though, that's that's not allowed. If you, it's got quite a wide field of view on here, but obviously, as you zoom in, you're only then seeing a very, very narrow section of, of what's actually around you. And because when you're wearing the device like this, 
this particular, oh, not my mouse there, apologies. When you're wearing it, um, this particular device covers your all of your um, it sort of seals around your face. So there is no peripheral vision that you can use at all. We do have other devices that leave your peripheral vis vision available and they're actually better for moving around in them. So you can still then you wear the device as you're walking around because you can just look down um, below the device to, to see what's sort of immediately in front of you. Um, but we still really advise people to be very careful and, and don't really adv advocate walking in, in the devices. Although for some users, again, because the cameras used in these devices are more sensitive than the human eye, in low light conditions, they'll actually be far better and you'll be able to see more information than you can see um, just with the, the human eye. So in those situations, it can actually be better and safer for people. Um, but we don't really, it, it's just going to be very, very careful. We wouldn't, say, wouldn't want anybody to hurt themselves or fall over or have an accident while they're wearing one of these trying to get around. Um, but everyone's different. So it, it's up to them whether they, they want to try or not. Um, very quickly as well, there's some just some extra modes on here. So I've got um, a bottle of water on here on the side. Um, so as well as the traditional color mode this has got, the Ace Sight VR product also has an edge enhancement mode. So this is just if you if you're preparing vegetables and you've got to obviously see your finger fingertips or, or the the actual vegetable itself, or if you've got something transparent like a like a bottle and you're trying to see it to grab it, um, this really makes them sort of stand out. Um, so my cup of tea on on here, you can just see the the edges of the handle. Hopefully, it's coming across really really clearly. That's a really nice thing they've thought of on there. If I just point it around the room, you can see there we've got Christmas decorations and things up over there, and uh, Caroline and Emma. Is he working away and the door frames it and the, the um, window frame and everything just sort of stands out um, really vibrantly. It's a bit takes a bit of getting used to, I have to say on there, but um, it can be very useful for certain users. Um, then we've got the inverse of that, so it's exactly the same, but with a white background rather than a black one. And then they've also sort of merged it with kind of a cartoon color version. So it cuts down on the number of colors, but it still is then a color image, but the edges are still really contrast enhanced um, with a black outline on them. So it's a nice thing that they do on that one. Um, finally, I'll just sort of show you if somebody's looking out the window if the cable will stretch and I don't knock it over my cup of tea. It's wrapped around something else. Apologies for this. Move that back on there. So if I have a look out there, the window on here, um, not particularly exciting the entrance to our building on here, but I can zoom in to some power lines and the trees sort of over here. So you can get a really good sense of how hopefully how much this unit can help people magnify uh, and see much, much further in the distance. Well, it's a bit of, bit of something to look at over there. Here we are. So that's that unit. I'll just stop sharing the screen on there. So to zoom out on Windows Magnifier. Close that down. There we are. Hopefully you've got me back now. Um, so just in comparison to that very quickly, what well, what else is there instead of that? Um, and one of the most popular products we actually have, I should have started with this first, apologies, is something called Max TV. So this is a pair of magnifying spectacles that sort of give you about 2 to 2.2 times magnification. Um, they've got wheels on them to adjust um, focus if you're short sighted. Uh, on there up to about minus three and a half to just about minus four. I think you can do it without wearing glasses because you can't wear your glasses with this as well. Um, but I'll just try if I switch camera again over to the my webcam and I'll turn this around to look at the eye chart over there. And then pop this over on here just to give you a bit of an idea of, of what a standard sort of low cost 60, well, I think it's 63 pounds. For a set of these, what they cost, then you can use that to adjust the focus a little bit. Um, if we then take it away, put it back on. So it is, it is magnifying there, and this, so it does, does help. Um, but if you compare that and try and remember that to what the the A site unit could do, uh, and the, the adjustable magnification you got, then obviously it's, it's completely different. But this, so is the price point. <laughs> so it's always a trade-off. If all the assistive technology devices cost less than £100, everybody would have them and everybody would know about them and they'd probably be available in supermarkets. But unfortunately, it's still such a niche market. They're only ever manufactured in batches of sort of well, hundreds or thousands at a time. And that's for the worldwide market um, at the moment. Um, and that's where the biggest challenges, challenges are at the moment. Um, 
So that's uh, wearables on there. Then I was going to go on to um, smartphone technology. Um, if any of you have um, more, perhaps even more elderly parents, uh, or then certainly grandparents, then trying to get them to understand an iPhone or the latest sort of Android phone, if they need magnification and doing WhatsApp and emails and sharing things, it's, quite, it's not easy at times. And I guess a lot of people have spent a lot of time over through, through COVID supporting family members uh, on Zoom and things like that. Um, which has advanced things a lot, actually. Um, Zoom was is actually one of the most straightforward ones for doing it with, I think. But it still can be confusing for people on a, on a smartphone, and doubly so if you then lose your vision. Um, so there's there are various different smartphones that are designed specifically for people with a vision loss, um, but they keep the sort of the core smart technologies that people want, and some extra ones that other phones don't tend to have, but keep it really, really straightforward as well to use, which is the key thing. Um, this is a new product called the Blind Shell Classic 2. Uh, it's £379, so again, they're not cheap. You can get large button phones for kind of £60, £70, pounds, which we also do. Um, but this is an Android smartphone, but that sort of part is all hidden from the user, just to keep it as simple as it possibly can be. So I'll just switch back to my other camera on here. Put that down there. So the first thing with this is that it will actually speak to you as well um, it's very difficult to hear that probably on here because i have a noise cancelling headset so if i if i hold it closely there hopefully so it reads out every menu option to you you can turn that off obviously it's very good, bright screen on there you can change the colors of the the um of it as well so you could if you preferred the yellow and black combination you can set that on there um but very very simple and the other key thing is that's probably the most important thing is it actually has a tactile keypad so for a visually impaired user trying to use a touch screen and seeing the input keyboard which normally covers only kind of the bottom four quarter of the screen at most and you can adjust them to cover a bit more but the keys are tiny for it so this goes back to the old sort of nokia style keys and they are really nice and tactile so they're actually raised up above the um the, the face of the the phone and the center button has a nice raised pip on it so really easy to feel so that it's really really straightforward even for users with quite severe arthritis they can still feel and, and press the buttons as well um, the menu system is just an up and a down and again these are really really tactile on here so they stick out a long way and they're, they're grippy so you can feel them up down call button with green or accept button with the green red button for, for cancel and hang up on things top left one is notification and the top right one is back so really, really straightforward. Um, dedicated volume buttons and a, a button on the side here, which is for Google Voice recognition. So you can actually talk to it and it uses um, proper Google Voice API recognition to, to recognize your voice. You don't need to train it and it'll be really, really accurate. Um, it's also got a dedicated flashlight on here. So it's torches are things a lot of people use on there. Uh, and it's got an SOS button on the back. So you program that in. So if you, if you need anyone, you just press that button and it will call your SOS contacts. Um, and it's got a, a, a 13 megapixel camera. I mean, it's no iPhone or, or Samsung Galaxy sort of phone in terms of quality of pictures, but it's usable, definitely. And its own flash for that as well. Um, so very neat. But so as well as it fully voicing everything that is on the phone, um, it also has uh, applications within it, which is specifically designed for visually impaired users. So if you've got somebody who just wants a really straightforward phone, you would just use contacts and messages. Call, sorry, contacts and messages, the first three on there. You can then go into applications, which has then all the sets of features. I'm not going to run through all of these, but it's got internet radio. It's got WhatsApp messaging. Um, it's got web browsing, which is fully voiced on it. Um, it's all the main kind of apps and services, Skype, uh, Facebook Messenger as well. So between yeah, WhatsApp, Skype and Facebook Messenger, that's the three kind of most popular ones that people use. They don't have Signal, signal yet on there, um, but might be one they add in the future. The nice thing is they, the, apps, the app store effectively on here is, are apps that they've then made work with a phone and there's no charge for those. There is no charge to update the phone at all. You just get software updates as and when they're available, they're pushed. Um, over your Wi-Fi or 4G or 3G data connection. Um, so really, really straightforward from that. Um, if I just go into the favorites though, so I've, I've set up favorites, so I push on here, I can turn on flashlight, I won't do that. What I was gonna show is beepers though. So if you 
I struggle with this. I don't know where I put my keys. You can get a, a beeper device that comes with it, which you can program into the device. You go into the beepers, find beeper. I've labeled this one my keys, push the button on here. And then it does take a, a, up to sort of 15 seconds. There it goes. It started straight away now. So you can hear it's doing, playing a little tune and it flashes on there as well. Stop it ringing on there. So really, really simple, but really, really useful on there. They are an extra. They're about 30 pounds for one of these. And the, the bulk discounts, I think, if people buy sort of five or 10 at a time on them if they need them. Um, but really neat. Simple again. And all of it's organized by the menu system on here. So I can go back. That's yeah, so in beepers on there. I'll go back to my favorites on the side. The other thing I was going to show you, it's really handy. My voice record is good as well. I just don't sadly have time to go through all of these. Uh, YouTube, yeah, so that's on there. It's at radio. This one's quite quite fun as well, in NFC object tagging. tagging. So if you've got somebody who's um, severely sight in bed or, or indeed totally blind, um, even sort of daily tasks like trying to decide which is uh, in their cupboard might be if they're baking, um, Self-raising flour or, or plain flour or um, sugar or sweetener, if they've got uh, their other half has has a sweetener in their, in their tea or coffee, then you get three of these with a device. And then these are much less expensive than the, the beeper tanks to, to buy more of. You can have hundreds and hundreds of these paired to the device on here. Um, if I go to read tags. So if I hold this closer to me now. So that. I pre you pre-record them, so I, the first time you connect the new tag, it knows it's new and says, what do you want to do? Do you want to type in a name for it or record an, an audio tag? I record an audio tag, so I'd have stuck that on some sugar. Um, and then you just oh, go back on that. Do another one. Sweetener. So that'd be the sweetener one. I don't know if the sound came across on there. Apologies if it didn't, but um, really, really straightforward. Um, very nice, really clear phone cover it to protect it um the other thing is the battery life on this is is really good it's three to five days on a single charge even though it is a smartphone um with wi-fi and, and 4g connection so it's decent um much more so than get on any normal smartphone um and it's available in this black color uh, red and black sorry or just a, a more straightforward black with then the a white controls uh, and buttons on it as well that's the the blind child classic too this is kind of four or five smartphones designed for visually impaired but this is the only one with tactile buttons like this that's that's really really good and, and fully self-voiced as well and straightforward to use so we do like this the, the previous version of it wasn't particularly good actually the controls were really fiddly they only launched this one about two months ago and we didn't take the other one on because it was just too too awkward for users to use because of the then an up down left right and a center click control all in the middle um, but this phone they've actually been able to design themselves from the ground upwards um, which is why they've managed to make the controls quite unique like this uh, on, on a smartphone. So, okay, that's that one. Um, then I was just going to switch camera for a second. Apologies if you're asking questions on there. I can't really have, I haven't really got time to look at them and answer on there. So we'll try and leave a few minutes at the end to, to do that. Um, if you've got a user who uses a computer um, technology, then there are various different solutions uh, for that with text-to-speech, but what I want to show first is with text-to-speech is a product called an Orcam Read. Just wake it up. It says on there. Oh, it switched itself off. Sorry, it's going to standby because it had, had, I turned it on first thing this morning. It turned itself off after half an hour. Um, I will quickly just show while well, it starts up. It takes about a minute. I'm just having some technical issues with this uh, typical bear with me a second all right this is started up anyway so I will use to show you the your cam unit here so this is a text-to-speech device which is uh, smartphone technology in something like a highlighter pen, four tactile buttons along the top, and you simply hold it like a pen, pull the trigger button, it will then photo whatever the camera can see and then read it back to the user. So if I grab something on here, I've got a really exciting uh, gas bill renew 
plan. Renewing gas prices at the moment isn't very fun at all. But it's important to read these sorts of letters. Um, if I hold it close to the camera on here, if I press and hold on here, I don't know if it's if you can see there's kind of a laser pointer that it uses to give you an idea of what the camera is actually seeing. So anything within that um, area is what the camera will see and then photograph. So for blind users, it's a little bit tricky to get used to initially because you just have to gauge how far away you have to hold it from the, the object. But for a, an A4 piece of paper, it's about kind of 40, 40 centimeters or so. So once you're used to that it, it, and just practice with it, you know how far it is. If you've only got a, like a medicine bottle you need to look at, you can hold it much, much closer, just a few inches away. So I'll hold this up on here, um, release it, it takes the picture. And if I hold it here, hopefully it will come. Mr. Ellis Ellis Vision Aid Technologies Limited, Bridge Lodge, Spalding Common, Spalding PE. I just pause it. So it's that simple and that quick. It will just read this entire document to me, um, and you can then skip forwards and backwards with the forwards and with the plus and the minus. That that also allows you to change the volume of the um, of the, the the speaking as well. Um, it does also have Bluetooth connectivity, so you can pair it to the Bluetooth headset um, or it's got a three and a half mil audio jack um, on it as well. So you can plug it into standard headphones. In fact, it comes with standard headphones as well. So you can listen privately. Um, it's got a built in light. So if you're using it in a restaurant or somewhere that's, that's dimly lit, you don't have to put the light on or, or, or take it somewhere. It is better illuminated to be able to read it. Um, and it also has something called smart reading. So if you're reading a menu, um, you can actually voice control it and say start smart reading and then ask it to find um chicken or find soup and it will then read all the instances um that follow on and contain those those terms in them so it's quite clever and, and for a user then trying to scan over a menu that's probably one of the, the most useful <laughs> things rather than um a visually impaired person's partner will have to sit there and read the entire menu to them quite often whereas if they can do it do it all themselves and jump just to the, the thing that they fancy for that for that meal um, you can voice control other parts of it as well um, like the, the speech rate or changing the language. Um, it supports quite a few different languages, but they do have to be installed on the device at the time when it's ordered. Um, and they do do wearable versions of it as well. So you get a much smaller version of this which actually clip to your glasses frame. Um, and then you can, it does exactly the same thing, but you can point at where you want to read rather than um, having to just click and, and capture the area. You can use your finger and that becomes the laser pointer as such. Which is quite clever um, but the price range of those goes up considerably higher but for some users that that feature set and the ability for those to recognize people's faces they can recognize currency they can recognize colors they can recognize barcodes on products when you're shopping you can actually program objects into them as well um, sometimes that's um, obviously very worthwhile for, for a user if they need to, to use any of those features um, so the orcam read smart as it is here um, at the moment, it's on offer. It's seventeen hundred pounds. Standard price is two thousand. And then the other units they do the Orcam My Eye Smart and the Orcam My Eye Pro. Um, you may have seen them actually. They've, they've advertised these on television over the last six months or so. It's the only company big enough to to be able to do that in their industry. In fact, um, those ones are sort of two thousand seven hundred and, and three thousand seven hundred. Um, they do come with training though, and people always have demonstrations of these and the demonstrations as I said are completely free of charge and totally no obligation that we do as well so people can really try them out and put them through their paces and see what they can and can't do sadly the only thing they can't really do at the moment is handwriting um, so a device like this just doesn't they can't it can't read handwriting at all um, so worth bearing that in mind for people as well um, it does have wi-fi though so you get completely free upgrades um, when you plug it into charge that's the only time it uses wi-fi the other key thing with a device like this is, is all the recognition and speech is completely offline. So if you have no internet, you go into a supermarket or you go into an area where um, there just is no 3G or 4G signal, it, it doesn't use the internet at all for, for doing the recognition. So all, everything you capture stays just on the device, um, doesn't get sent anywhere. And that then means it can just work whatever the, the internet connection, it doesn't matter at all. So as you plug it into the mains to charge it, this will then pair to your Wi-Fi network once you set it up to do so, and it checks for updates. Uh, if there is an update, it'll just automatically download it and install, and install it. So really, really simple and easy to use. Um, these are also really useful for people with learning difficulties um, or um, those who are severely dyslexic as well. It's so simple just to be able to capture and, and read something back out loud um, with it. Um, it does also work in the distance, so I can um, change this to a pointer now and I can put it around behind 
me. I'll have a go on the see if it will read over there. So we a challenge for it. See if it gets it. It is reading those on there. Um, I haven't got anything on here I can point it out really. But the nice thing is it, it works, and that that sign just behind me is too easy and, and very very close. But it works anywhere really that a human eye can see. If the sign is big enough, you can point, and, and you've got the, the ability to point it at it. You'll have a really good go at, at capturing and reading. So for signs, if you're in a an airport or a train station, you need to read information from there. Um, it, it's not limited to just something right in front of you. It's the camera's autofocus and focuses to infinity, and will pick out text from anything you pointed at. Um, so yes, that's that's the OrCam Read Smart unit. Um, I think then lastly, because I think we've got a few minutes left, haven't we, Lizzie? It's till, it's till ten o'clock, isn't it? Yes, and it's till ten o'clock. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> fab. Um, ergonomics, very briefly touch on. Um, I, before I do that, I'll do Windows magnification as well. Um, so many of you are probably aware that Windows has built in um, magnification on it. Uh, there are specialist pieces of software um, that you can use to do that instead. But um, obviously, if you don't need to, then why would you um, pay extra for something that's if it's not needed? So just share my screen on here. Hopefully that's sharing just a screen with a. I'll go to BBC on here, actually, probably easier. So with Windows Magnify, you just push the Windows key on the keyboard and plus, and it will turn it on. You get a um, toolbar up here, which you can then adjust. And as you magnify in, obviously, it will enlarge everything that you're looking at on here. Um, what this doesn't do is as you zoom in more and more, the text will start to pixelate on here. Uh, this happens in all apps. Um, if you're doing using a web browser, actually, it's far better just to use the built-in magnification controls like Control Plus and Control Minus just, just within um, Chrome or um, Edge or whatever browser you might be using, because then you don't use the text um, quality. But if things like Microsoft Office uh, applications, you would do Outlook, um, things like that, you will start to pick sites. So for business users, um, it can be really important having a, a better quality screen magnifier, and that's where things like Supernova and Zoom Text um, which start at kind of 300 pounds for the magnifier really help um, because you don't get that loss of quality as you zoom in. You can have text up to kind of 1600% um, or even higher actually and the, the text is pin sharp because it, it redraws it at every level rather than it starting to go fuzzy. Um, but again, if you only need a bit of magnification, the blurring isn't bad. So just use what comes with, with Windows and indeed Mac has a built-in magnifier as well uh, on them too. Um, and it, Windows even have, has speech on it. I'm not going to demonstrate that as well, but the built-in narrator functionality has got so much better over the years. Again, for many users, home users, that might be all they need. The problem really comes if you're relying on it for, to do an education, so a university course or a, a proper business course, uh, or oh, sorry, at work, sorry, um, when the limitations can really kind of get in the way of, of your productivity. And that's where the justification for the other systems can can come in but again it doesn't cost anything to try these and they're built into the program so if people just know they're there it's that's the biggest problem we always have is letting people know that this kind of technology is there because it's so niche it's just not really advertised um anywhere so i'll come out of that and then if you can imagine i'll stop sharing my screen if you've got a visually impaired user and they're, they're reading or they're trying to see their computer screen all the time, what do people do? They lean forwards and get closer and closer to it all the time. So ergonomics is critical because quite often people have bad back and bad posture just sat at a, a desk anyway. Um, but if you're visually impaired, that really compounds it. So the earlier you can stop that um, and give the user a good posture, um, obviously the far lower their chances of, of developing severe kind of neck and back and shoulder issues as they, as they um, as they age. Um, so very quickly, I'll just switch camera on here. Just a few little things that, that we do. We've, we've been doing a bit of ergonomics for, well, for years now because we keep getting asked for it by users. So the first thing on, on a modern sort of desk um, is if you're using a laptop or a tablet, don't have it sat down on the table because then your head is the wrong height. You're having to lean down right on it um, and it's terrible for posture on there. Um, you really should have a, a laptop riser, or this is a tablet laptop riser. It's called an Arrow tablet stand. They're about 50 pounds. They fold up flat. 
instantly raises the screen much higher so you're not then having a tendency to lean down so much and then you pair that with a proper keyboard and mice keyboard and mouse as well uh, a bluetooth or a wireless one and much much better for you paired with this for visually impaired users we would normally have a monitor arm uh, with a, a much larger sort of 22 to 27 inch monitor they're the most popular screen sizes between those two two sizes the key thing with a monitor arm is that you can bring the screen all the way forward um, and because even a visually impaired user at this because you've got your keyboard and mouse in front of you would have to lean forwards perhaps or have a tendency to, to to see the screen more easily if you've got a monitor arm which clamps to the back of the monitor if you imagine that wasn't monitor you can then just bring the screen actually in front of the the front edge of the desk so you can sit upright in your chair and have the screen in front of you and then your keyboard and mouse is still down here which you can see and access so much much better for posture um, getting a decent chair as well we can't recommend enough the standard kind of viking direct or, or aldi chairs that you get for kind of 50 pounds don't have the, the necessary adjustment to, for you to sit comfortably at them if you're sat there all day sort of working um, and with people home working now, it's even more important because they might just be using a dining room chair, which again is is awful. Um, so getting a, a, a proper chair with um, proper seat adjustment, height adjustment, uh, back adjustment, um, and to make sure it's at the right height is all really important. So with a desk as well, the chair I've got here has all of those things. It's got adjustable arms on them as well. Um, you sit at a desk and have your, the arms at the correct height to um so, so they're straight um but then sitting down all day isn't isn't good for you so the nice thing with the electronics it's down desks like this so you can program your heights in and just push this i can't get the webcam much closer my favorite isn't numbers one to four on here are programmed if i push two it will then raise the desk up it's really quiet and this will then raise it to standing height which i've set for me i'll just bring it back a little bit on there doesn't take long to do it and then you can stand up but it's coming across okay the correct height to then work comfortably at for an hour it's not good obviously to stand all day either um, but just breaking it up so standing for an hour sitting for an hour um, just really helps to break that up is much much better for you than um, just sitting down for seven eight hours a day and not moving anywhere um, just switch back on there so that is a really quick sort of whistle top store of <laughs> whistle top uh, tour of uh, some of the devices and, and solutions that we have um that desk there for example is uh, i think it's on offer at 299 pounds including vat and delivery so they're not hugely expensive um they used to be much much more so and that's part of the reason we looked at um getting desks because they used to be sort of five six hundred pounds um available in all different finishes it's got usb charging on it so you can charge your smartphone and tablets um, built-in drawer as well on there so I didn't mention that on there so you, you've got storage area for whatever you might need on there as well so really practical um, and just much better for you than, than just being sat down all day um, so yes I think um, that's pretty much everything I wanted to show so thank you very much for those of you still with us <laughs> hope you found it interesting uh,